More beer from Yorkshire? Fuck off. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands Box and Booze Reviews. I have got one from the Acorn Brewery today, and it's it's another beer from Yorkshire, believe it or not. And this one's called Barnsley Gold. Barnsley is, of course, the birthplace of the life president of Yorkshire. When they gained independence, um, they put him on the throne, Jeff Boycott, and he's been on there for the past. I think it's 375 years. He's the oldest man in the world, and um, he's he's the life president of Yorkshire. I think he's going to go on for another 500 years. They all worship him up there. He's like you know, it's it's the law that you have to every Sunday worship um, the, an idol in the shape of Jeff Boycott. Every every Yorkshireman's got one in their in their house, and uh, yeah, he's. Um, He's got the official stamp of approval because he is from Barnsley. <laughs> this is all bollocks, by the way. Don't any of you foreign people watching it, you know, foreign, <laughs> bloody foreigners. Any foreigners watching this is, is, well, actually, is it true? It might be true. Anyway, um, <laughs> I am talking absolute bollocks. Uh, this is from the Acorn Brewery. They're based in Barnsley up in Yorkshire, Yorkshire, I can't say it without saying York, Yorkshire, and that was established in 2003. I've had a couple of their beers, to be honest, they're pretty average, but the thing is, I'm not allowed to say that because um, it's against the law in Yorkshire, and if ever I want to go up there, you know, if ever my you know passport ever gets in date and my DNA actually hasn't got any impurities in it, I might be allowed into Yorkshire, but yeah, they've been pretty average. I tried their bitter pride of Yorkshire, or pride of Barnsley or pride of Yorkshire or something I think it was called. Very average, if that was the pride, then fuck you know, I'd hate to taste the shit. But they're quite low ABV all their beers. They're all around the 4.2, and this is 4.3%. It's a premium golden ale. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, let's just get onto the beer before I start talking even more bollocks than I'm talking now. Okay, this is a three, th uh, no, it's a 500 ml bottle. It's 4.3%. It is a premium golden ale, as they say. The ingredients are water, malted barley, wheat, hops, and yeast. Um, that's all that is. Oh, hang on, they've got the brew sheet here. It's Marisotta, Crystal, and Wheat. Okay, let's go through these. Marisotta, quite a popular malt that's used in um, British ales really does you can taste them marisotta malts in certain beers they taste absolutely amazing uh, they've got crystal malt in there crystal malt is basically pale malt that's been um, heated up for a while and what happens is um, the the young shoots start growing through and the the barley will produce or the the malt will produce sugar to feed these new shoots and just when that happens, and just before the sh these new little buds start feeding on the sugar, it's taken out. That crystallisation that has happened with the sugar in the malt, that's transferred into the um, brew. And then you've got wheat, which is an adjunct, and that gives it a really nice mouthfeel. Uh, the hops are UK Challenger Goldings and USA Crystal. Uh, I'm not familiar with UA USA Crystal, not tried them before, but UK Challenger and Goldings, they're quite popular. Challenger is a uniquely um, British hop based, well, I think it was originally designed and, or originally grown in Kent. And of course, Goldings, you get Goldings everywhere. You get Styrian Goldings are Slovenia and, you know, Austria. Uh, you get East Kent Goldings, which are the famous Kent Golding hops that you get in a lot of beers. A lot of the good beers 
uh, from the UK. USA Crystal, as I say, I have not tried them before. Uh, golden coloured ale, sharp bitterness, citrus aroma. Okay, if that's what they're saying, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Okay, let's get this open. I'm resisting the urge to talk like a northerner because I've probably signed my own death warrant. There are probably hordes of northerners on their way down from Yorkshire to fry my ass. There's the cap. It's got a picture of two hot buds on there. Quite nice. Are they hot? No, they're acorns. Idiot. Fucking hell. I can say field craft was never one of my strong points. They're two acorns. They look like a pair of bollocks. They could be Jeff Boycott's bollocks, actually. There's rumours going around that his bollocks look like acorns. Unsubstantiated. I think it came from, that came from Lancashire, that rumour. Could be wrong, though. Stirring this shit up between them two, like I need to stir it up. On the nose, out the bottle. <sighs> Sulfurous yeast. <sighs> Let's see what else is in there. Not a great deal. Okay, let's get it into the glass. I can't really get much out of the bottle at all. On the day that it's announced that one of the symptoms of the coronavirus is loss of smell and taste. Holy shit. Well, here it is in the glass. I'm actually drinking this out of a London Pride glass, which is a hangable offence in Yorkshire. If you drink, uh, if you drink northern beer from a southern shandy drinking puffs glass... You're gonna get hung by the neck till you're dead. That's a filthy glass and oh fuck's sake. Dishwasher is gonna go out the window. Right, on the nose. Oh, there's some slight, some slight citrus aroma there. Very light lemon. Lemon, but it's really subtle. I'm not getting any malt at all. It's just like lemon and very subtle floral aromas. Let's see what it's like on the palate. Cheers. Hmm. That is quite nice. The lack of aroma is certainly made up for in flavour. If you can see that, there's a lot of carbonation there that doesn't translate into the mouthfeel. It's a light golden colour with half finger head. Flavours you are getting. Light lemon and orange citrus, very light, very subtle. Very light, hot bitterness on the arse end of it. Touch of caramel malt and quite a nice mouthfeel. The nice mouthfeel, I'm assuming, is coming from the wheat because it tastes quite full bodied. For what they're calling a premium golden ale, yeah. Was quite nice. It's it's basically a really hoppy, mm. that wheat is translating. It's it's got like a a very subtle creamy style mouthfeel. Now, when you get that creamy style mouthfeel, it's usually from the adjuncts that are added, like the wheat, or if you get like you know. Um, oats and stuff like that. You do get slight flavour from them, but you get a great mouthfeel. The, the flavours you normally get are quite creamy. Now the creaminess on this is subtle. Everything about this is subtle. <clears throat> the emphasis on this is to make it drinkable. And they say it's 4.3%. You can drink gallons of that. And it's quite nice. I've just tried the um, Little Valley the Little Valley um, Pale, which I don't think was as good as this. This has got more character to it. 
Mouthfeel is really good. I really do like that. It's got that slightly, as I say, you've got the slightly creamy mouthfeel. Then you've got all your, you know, your subtle citrus and floral notes on that. And then on the arse end, you've got the nice creamy flavour from the wheat. And then you've got your malt on the back end, which is like a slight bis cross between biscuit and caramel. You know the crystal malts? I think that's what's giving it, you know, the, the, I wouldn't say, how can I put it? It's, it's a, sort of a hybrid between the two. There's slightly more caramel on that than there is biscuit, but the two are there, you can definitely get that. And it's nice, it's typically British as well. Another great British golden ale. This is the difference between top fermenting and bottom fermenting. Bottom fermenting, you would have got a lager, a nice hoppy lager out of that. Top fermenting it, you're getting all them lovely malts coming through. You're getting the nice creamy mouthfeel from the wheat. And it just tastes great. Really nice. Super drinkable. Moorish as well. Really good. That's probably the best. Um, the other two I've tried were decidedly average. This is a good one. Uh, it's not cheap though. I had to get this from a website. I think it's called Everything Yorkshire. It cost me £2.70. And uh, I would say, if you're going to pay that, then skip all this and get some stuff from the Cropton Brewery. They do some, on that Everything Yorkshire, they do some of the Cropton Brewery stuff. That's a better option, in my opinion. But this is good. I would give this, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Really nice. On a day like this, you know, if you're not a lager fan, you like your ales and stuff, you want something a bit lighter, than your, you know, your average ruby ale or whatever, or your IPA, but you like your British style beer, get some of this. This is really good. Really good British, top fermented British golden ale. Really nice. Eight out of 10, recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.